Ed Sheeran received an F at college in music. He would go on to become one of the biggest selling artists of modern times with the highest grossing tour of all time and 116 awards in nine short years. He's written for some of the biggest names in music. You can also buy a pair of his Crocs on eBay for a hundred of your finest British pounds. That's if I don't beat you to it. So how did Ed Sheeran go from sofa surfing to stadium tours? This is Ed Sheeran, The Come Up. Let's go Sheerios and start with mini Ed. Born in West Yorkshire in 1991, the youngest of two boys, Ed moved to Suffolk aged four, where he grew up for most of his childhood. He had a stutter as a child, which Ed claims was the result of a birthmark on his face being lasered off. Age nine, his dad gave him the Marshall Mathers LP, which Ed learned off by heart. Bit young dad. He claims learning the fast rapping along to a melody helped him to get rid of his stutter. In 2002, aged 11, Ed watched Eric Clapton perform at the Queen's Golden Jubilee concert on his TV, which he says is the reason he wanted to learn to play guitar. In the following months, Ed went to see Damien Rice live at an intimate gig and met him afterwards. Damien urged Ed to pursue his dreams as a singer-songwriter. So that night, Ed went home and wrote a ton of songs. Ed's music teacher at Thomas Mills High School encouraged his musical ambitions, helping him to record and burn his EPs, which he would go on to sell from his backpack. In 2004, on his 14th birthday, he was gifted a loop pedal by his parents, which became an iconic part of an Ed Sheeran performance. He would go on to release four EPs in the next four years, and Ed definitely started to build a reputation around school as a future star. Aged 16, Ed was voted most likely to be famous. After he completed that school year, he moved to London, jumping onto any stage that would have him. He also went to as many live gigs as possible to try and take inspiration from other performers. Nisloppy spotted Ed front and centre at their gigs time and time again, so soon they became friends. Ed went on to become a guitar tech for the band and he even supported them live in April 2008. By the end of that year, Ed would make good on the Most Likely to be Famous award from school as he made his TV debut auditioning for ITV's Britannia High. He succeeded in making it to the top 40, but went no further, probably due to his questionable dance moves. Basically, imagine watching the first robot ever made. That's how Ed danced. In 2009, Ed enrolled at the Academy of Contemporary Music in Guildford, but after just a few months, he was asked to support Just Jack on tour. As Ed decided to accept the offer, he left without completing the course and received six Fs. At this point, it was looking pretty bleak for Ed. He had very little money and would often ask crowds for a sofa to stay on before playing. He also offered to support Just Jack on tour for free. This sealed the deal for Just Jack's manager, Stuart Camp, who would go on to become Ed's manager for the next 10 years. But first, they just became good friends. In February 2010, an SBTV YouTube video showing Ed loop pedaling all over the place on You Need Me, I Don't Need You started to gain millions of hits. But after facing rejection from most music labels in the UK, he saved up nearly £2,000 from gigs and CD sales and decided to fly to the US to see if his big break could be found there. This is where things started to take off. At the start of April 2010, he performed a gig just outside of LA and was invited to perform at Jamie Foxx's club, The Foxhole, a few nights later. On the 30th of April, he found himself performing on Jamie's national radio show where he sang two songs and solidified his support from the Hollywood A-lister. Ed even ended up staying on his sofa for a few days. When he got back to the UK, he was greeted with an offer. Having spotted his performance on SBTV, Example asked Ed to support him on tour. The original announcement on Ed's Facebook fan page gained just 200 likes. Out of the tour was born the infamous Nando song. The tour came to an end in October 2010, by which point Ed had Stuart as his manager and just one more record to make before being signed by a major label. It was in January 2011 that he released the Number 5 Collaborations Project EP. It featured Devlin, Getz and JME to name but a few, and it got to number two on iTunes. This caught the attention of Atlantic Records and within weeks he had a recording contract in hand which he signed at his local pub. And the rest is history. 18 was released in June 2011 and made it to number three in the UK singles chart and his debut album came five months later reaching number one in the UK. To be fair to him, Ed's work ethic has stayed with him in his success. 
He's toured the world three times, most recently playing 258 dates with his Divide tour. He has also worked with an insane list of artists, writing, collaborating and performing with the likes of... Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, Camila Cabello, Jessie Ware, Beyonce, Cardi B, Liam Payne, Major Lazer, Rudimental, Anne Marie, Jess Glynn, Little Mix, Oli Mer, Sean Mendes, BTS, Halsey, Stormzy, The Weeknd, Eminem and more. So, what do you think his next album will be called? And will it be his last one? We hope not. Comment down below what you think.